welcome everyone thank you for joining us today so let's begin our session with the wonderful quote the potential benefits of artificial intelligence are huge so are the dangers so for starting a new chapter of learning i divya jain being your host for today's event wants to extend a warm greetings and good evening to all of you present here i hope you all are doing amazing so today on behalf of the sams family i welcome you all to this exciting international session where we look into the remarkable intersection of javascript and the effective utilization of ai tools today we embark on a journey where the dynamic nature of javascript meets the endless possibilities that arise from leveraging the power of artificial intelligence and to add our guest of honor and today's speaker sir harshit dugga it is a great honor to have you with us sir we are grateful for your presence now let me introduce our today's speaker to you all he has made a significant impact in the field of computer engineering currently he is in final year of study and has displayed exceptional dedication and aptitude in the domain with over a year of hands on experience in month step development he has skills in this powerful web development framework showcasing the ability to create he had robust and scalable applications his comprehensive knowledge of the month step has allowed him to build dynamic and responsive web applications contributing to his status a uh, proficient and sought after developer really for sorry for the inconvenience so before starting let me uh, give me a brief introduction of myself already this is that introduce you still why you also trust me why you also trust me that i am speaking about javascript who i am basically i have experience of more than one and a half year in the field of web development and my main tech stack is mon stack and mon is basically nothing but the frame they are used framework of javascript only and here i will be using a word a keyword powerful and most renowned and the reason because the reason is because if you see the stats of 2022 python was the number one programming language but javascript has beaten that JavaScript, JavaScript has become the most powerful language right now. I will be telling you the reasons behind that. So, uh, before starting off, let me to a cool project which I have made right now, and it. so uh, what i was talking that we will be talking about overview of javascript why, why how i begin my journey and how i taught how how i taught so many students in my community that how they should follow a proper road map a proper uh, tech stack they should follow and what at all they should know before moving forward with javascript okay so let's start basic introduction so javascript is a popular programming language uh, that that adds interactivity to website it enhances our experience improves website functionality and en enables dynamic content so what is the meaning of dynamic content let me show you live okay if i open uh, my linkedin account if i open any of the website the website will open uh, perfectly okay if i open any website it, it will open perfectly the reason is that when my this my see my this hand is my client and this hand is a server my client is sending a get request to the server and what that server is doing that server is sending back a uh, response and that response is containing three files first file is html file second file is css file and the third file is javascript file okay now what is happening is the browser is rendering all the three files and the website which you are able to see is is known as front end and this design welcome back this link tree which is written this photo everything is rendered because of css and html 
But when it comes to interactivity, when it comes to the user input, like if I am able to type any anything in, from my keyboard, password, everything is rendered just because of JavaScript. Now, what will happen if I go to the site settings? If I go to site settings and uh, I disable JavaScript, I have disabled JavaScript. Can can you let me know that that what is going to happen if if you are uh, if you are able to unmute yourself or or if you can able to chat, you, know, you can write the chat. You can can you let me know that what is going to happen with that website? I have just blocked JavaScript. Let me show you what is going to what is exactly going to happen. So if I reload the website, see. I am not able to get the front end part on, uh, only. I am not able able to get anything. The website is completely blank. Blank. The reason behind it, that is, I have previously told that client sends a get request. The word request is coming here, and that request function, which is where request and response, these two are the JavaScript functions which is handled by the server. So server server is not at all able to get that re that request from the client because i have blocked the javascript now the moment i will enable javascript client will be able to send the request and server will able to will be able to uh, send back the response and browser will be able to handle that response and will show you the website if i again uh, allow the javascript and uh, again i will reload the website see the website is back that's the power of javascript because Nothing is nothing is uh, on the internet is available without JavaScript. Everything you are browsing, maybe YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, everything is is because of JavaScript. Now you you all might be thinking we are uh, there are so many programming languages of internet. For example, PHP is available, Python is available, C plus plus, Java, all that can be used in the backend. But why only JavaScript? Because uh, when it comes to when it comes to your uh, Free, free part, or it, it when it comes to the interactivity part, JavaScript is more most reliable. Is most reliable. Okay, that's why we are using JavaScript. And you later on you will know that JavaScript is also used in app development, game development, blockchain development. So by learning only one language, you are able to go to so many fields. Not at, not only web development, you are able to explore so many fields. Okay, so let's go to the advantages of JavaScript. JavaScript can be used in for both for front end, back end development, making uh, enabling uh, language. It's also easy to learn and has a large community support. Now, what I mean by community support, all of the participants should know. I think all of you know about Stack Overflow, right? If everything, uh, if you are having any doubt, you just browse to Google, and the first website which comes is Stack Overflow. And the community support of JavaScript is huge. Anywhere you can find the answer of any question, any bug, just within a second. But when it comes to uh, languages like PHP, community support is not that active right now because PHP is a very old programming language. Right now, so many companies, so many new startups are only focusing on JavaScript. All the uh, frameworks are built by JavaScript only. I can take the example of YouTube. YouTube, the front end of YouTube is mostly made up of React. That's why it is so fast. But if it was made, it was made previously on PHP only, and that was so uh, too slow. If you want to road, uh, reload your uh, YouTube page, or if you want to revisit any any of the video, it would it will take some time to uh, send a response to uh, request to the server. But JavaScript redu reduces that load. And let me tell you that in Google Chrome, there is a very cool thing which you can explore. If you right click on uh, any of the element in any website, you can go to inspect. And uh, if you go to inspect, a very cool developer tools op tool opens. You can explore all the code here. Uh, all the code, front end code of Google is available here. That's not uh, basically it's not the complete code because uh, code of Google is closed source. It's not open source. Open source means that the code is freely available on the internet. And closed source means that code is not available in the net, in, on the internet. Now, what I want to show you is if you click on here, this icon, icon just near to the console. I hope you are able to see my cursor. And if I click on network, see in the network, uh, network tab, you will be able to get all your responses, all your requests, which is sent by the client to the server. If I click on reload, see what will happen in the network section. Okay. Just uh, focus here in this part. If I click reload, see the list comes here and these all are nothing but the request which is sent by my client to the Google's server. These all are nothing but requests. And if I click on the front end part, here it is. 
response tab. Here is the complete response which is getting by the Google server. This is the huge response, which is not readable, obviously, but this is how you can explore the network tab of uh, of the Google or any of the website. And these this all is uh, JavaScript written. This all is uh, Java, written by JavaScript only. Okay. Uh, let me close this. Now, uh, benefits of that, when you scroll to a website, a very nice animation appears. Okay. Now you all might be thinking that animation is because of CSS because CSS is having a property known as animation, but only that CSS animation does not play, play that important role. When it comes to interactivity, you have to set some pixels, some amount of heading, some amount of height that what amount of height, what amount of pixels, when you scroll down that an, an animation should appear. For example, I want, uh, animation to appear when I scroll 50 pixels down. So that I can only do with the help of JavaScript. That is not achievable with only a simple CSS. If I want to write CSS about this, I have to write uh, 10 to uh, 10 to 12 lines of code of CSS just to, just to achieve that functionality. But through JavaScript, I have to only write two lines of code and increases website functionality and user experience. It has very less server load. As I've already shown you in the network tab, the load of the server is very less because of JavaScript. It handles the server request and response very easily because here is a method of known as fetch. If you know or uh, don't know, I don't uh, know that I will tell you later in this uh, in this session only about a fetch method. Fetch, fetch method is used for APIs that actually gets the response and shows you the exact data. That is because of fetch API. Now uh, we'll know about the real world applications and uses of a different field in JavaScript. Okay. So now first is web development, second is blockchain development, next is game development, app development, and automations. Now let me discuss one by one all of these. Okay, web developer. All of you must be knowing about that. Uh, if you know, if you want to start with web, web development, everyone will tell you that go for HTML, CSS, and, and JavaScript. Without JavaScript, web development is nothing. Nothing is uh, uh, possible without of, uh, JavaScript in web development. Now web development is having two uh, two parts one is front end part and second is back end part the front end part is handled uh, handled by the html css and javascript and when it comes to back end you have to work on servers you have to handle the request and response you have to handle databases now that is because of the frameworks which is available which is which is available by javascript there are two main frameworks we, which you might be uh, known about one is node.js and second one is react.js now react is a front end library of javascript which is used to create front end part uh, youtube spotify and some other famous websites uh, are made by react one of the main component is react and when it when it comes to backend node.js is used in many of the websites it is very much easy to easy to learn and the user interface is very easy when it comes to uh, community support it is very much high and let, now secondly let's let's talk about blockchain development javascript is often uh, is often used to develop smart contracts platform like Ethereum using Solidity and Solidity is built by JavaScript only. Web3.js. Web3.js is a very famous uh, framework which is developed by JavaScript. It also helps, it is also helped in uh, maintaining smart contracts, enabling the, uh, enabling and disabling NFTs and to uh, use in different, different strategies of making, making all the frameworks like we have used in zero, like you have seen in Coinbase, like, like how the chart is going up and down. That is because of web3.js. Web3.js is a library which is used in the backend. Next is game development. Now you might be, uh, you might know, you might know about Valorant and Dota 2. Okay. Now their graphics are so much high, very nice graphic because the physics, which is used uh, to implement the physics, which is implemented is because of, uh, of, uh, some of the famous libraries like float.js is a very famous, uh, library, which you can learn. And, uh, there is one more library, which is called uh flute uh, if i'm not wrong flute the js it is a very flamed, famous library which is used to implement those uh, those those fun functionalities now javascript is uh, used as a primary programming language in many ga uh, game engines now you, you might be you might have been playing uh, the that crocodile dinosaur game in the chrome when when internet is not there right it is very fun to play that is also built by java the speed which increases constantly and uh, the score which is counted that is all made by javascript all the web apps like 
Flappy Bird, which is uh, which is very famous right now. Every developer is making as a project Flappy Bird. It's all made by JavaScript. Next, let's move, let's move on to app development. Uh, this is the most in interesting part, which I am also inclined towards right now. Is app development right now in industry? There is a high demand demand of two major technologies. One is of a full stack developer, and second is of a app developer. Now. Uh, Apps can be run on two different platforms. One is iOS, and second one is Android. And for iOS, you have to you are, you should be knowing Swift. And for Android, there are so many uh, popular languages like Plot, Kotlin, Flutter. But why I'm focus why I'm focusing on JavaScript? Why so much emphasis on that? Because if you learn JavaScript, you will be able to master React Native. Now there are two libraries which I'm going to tell you. Don't be confused. One is React JS and second one is React Native. React JS is only used for web development. It is not used for app development. And second is React Native. React Native is a is React Native is a language which is used for app development. Now, if you learn JavaScript thoroughly, which are all the topics which I am going to tell you right now, if you learn all the topics thoroughly, then it is very easy to for you to go for React Native, and you can develop both iOS and Android applications. By only one language, which is React Native, you don't need to go for Swift or Kotlin, Flutter to make apps. You can go. You can only learn one language, React Native, and you you are good to make uh, mobile apps, and you can publish on App Store or Google Play Store. Now, the time to learn some uh, JavaScript. It is just let me give you some basic syntax overview. So, so basic. Basically, variables are declared by, like this: var, let, and const. They are also, these are some keywords which are which are used to declare the variables. And if you want to print anything in the console or in the screen, known as const, which prints whatever you want to print. Okay. And here is again console console dot log hello and let x is equal to one point four. Let b is equal to name. Let me share show you live now. Uh, I want you all to please have a Paper or you can type in your note and give you some basic syntax. Uh, how you can go, how you can learn JavaScript and how you can run it on different different systems. Okay, so there are two main methods from where you can you can run JavaScript. Number one is you can go to your uh, developer tab and if you click on console, uh, in the console you can learn uh, you can run JavaScript. Okay, if I write con uh, console dot log hello. It will run here also, and secondly, you can run you can run JavaScript in any text editor. Right now, I will be using VS Code. You can use Notepad, or you can also look Sublime Text or uh, Sublime Text Editor or uh, uh, like Atom. Okay, I will be using VS Code. So here is my VS Code setup, and uh, let me create a a file. The extension for JavaScript is .js. Okay, so I've created a file of JavaScript which which is named by basic basics of JavaScript dot js. Now there are three main keywords which are used to create any variables. One is uh, one is var x is equals to five. Var c is equals to five. Second is let x uh, let x is equals to ten and const d is equals to hello. These are three keywords which are used to create to initialize any of the variable var let And const. Nowadays, var is not at all used. It is not at all recommended to use var because there are so many disadvantages of using var. You might face any error or any any of the problem while you compile the language. Uh, so before going moving forward, let me tell you that how JavaScript is compiled. Okay. So for any programming languages to run in any of the editor, we need compiler. But Uh, for example, in the case of C plus plus, we need a GCC compiler. In the case of Python, we need Python compiler. But in case of JavaScript, we don't need any compiler compiler to be installed in our system because JavaScript is JavaScript. You know, uh, JavaScript is compiled by the browser automatically. Browser has a built-in compiler known as JIT, Just in Time Compiler. What it does is, whenever a request is sent by the browser to the server, it automatically Compile the uh, JavaScript file by JIT, and it shows you the output. So externally, you don't need to download any of the compiler. That's why I just created a file uh, with the extension .js, and I have just started. Uh, so I was telling about var, const, and let. 
var is not used because it can uh, it can it can cause so many errors so it is not at all recommended the two two keywords which are mostly used are let and const basically whenever you want to initialize any of the variable which you think might be changed or might you might might have to be uh, changed in future for example if i uh, go if i type let x is equals to 10 and uh, here i want to change the value of x is equals to 20 it it is allowed in let in let because it is uh, uh, it is the basic javascript syntax that let allows you to change the value of any of the variable but in case of const it is not allowed if i if i uh, if i change the value of of this of this variable from hello to something else it will give me a error it is it will not work okay let me run this and let me show you that uh, it will print okay so, uh, sorry sorry uh, i have to do console.log i have already told you that to print anything you have to do console.log log x save save the file and uh, run it see it is printed can you see it is printed right now now let me tell you about uh, functions how you can uh, how you can use functions in javascript to use function you have to use the keyword called function and then you, uh, whatever new name you have to give for example add and this function will be created now in javascript there is no uh, no no any not concept of any data type because javascript has built in uh, built in data types you don't have to externally uh, write any data types like int double float these all concepts are only in java or c++ it is not in it is not the case in javascript the compiler will automatically understand that this number 10 is is integer type this is of string type you don't need to externally uh, externally write string or int if i have to create a function add then i can do return 20 plus 5 and uh, if i call log add save the file and run it see here you can see it is showing me the output 25 now let me explain this line number 10 what i have done here console.log means that the output will be printed in the terminal or in the console but to call this function we have to uh, we have to uh, we have to write this function again and we have to open and close the parentheses so that this function will be called so this was a basic syntax overview and the best part of javascript is you don't need to write any semicolon anywhere it is completely it is completely fine if you write or not if you forgot get semicolons it is completely uh, if you want to type semicolon or not it will not give you any errors this is the best part of javascript that you don't need to type any semicolon uh, please let me know that uh, that if you understood some basics basic of javascript syntax or not moving forward let me tell you uh, let me tell you what road maps you should follow if you want to become the if you want to become pro in javascript so there are three stages which you have to follow stage one is basic then intermediate and advanced and please don't try to uh, move to intermediate or advanced before completing each and every topic thoroughly okay and please this is my request to everyone if you want to become pro in javascript don't follow so many resources only follow one resources otherwise you will be stuck in tutorial hell you will be just only watching tutorials and you won't be able to create any of the projects so basics when it comes to basics concepts you should be knowing variable scopes what are functions arrays loops objects now how objects are created what is new keyword how objects are created and destroyed you should be knowing all of this then you will be able to move forward to intermediate then in intermediate you should be knowing what is this keyword what is strict what are clauses what are sync versus async what are cookies sessions and of some basics of object oriented programming now when you complete your intermediate part it should take you around 1 to 2 months that will it will be it will definitely take you to take you around 2 1 to 2 months easily because it it is not that easy topics are less but javascript is very much vast it is very vast you it will take time so please don't uh, hesitate and, and don't give up give up if you are not able to solve any of the problem if you are not able to create any questions you can always search for in stack overflow and you can always uh, ask questions in different different communities you will definitely get better answers but don't give up because it is a time taking process now when you come to advance then there are some topics like higher order function what are promises what do you mean by uh, fetch a what are, what is fetch what how basically async work what are apis 
what are what is error hand error handling what is file handling and all about window objects when you will when you will get to know all these topics then you are good to go to clear any of the interview you can apply to any of the job interviews and you will definitely able to crack any of the interviews but the thing is to get into interviews you should be having two to three projects then only you will be able to set in the interviews and you will be able to crack it now few resources which i for fo- personally followed and you should also follow is free code camp the course of free code camp and secondly official javascript documentation don't need to you don't need to go for any other third uh, third resource because there are so many channels available in youtube uh, code with harry is available there are so many like uh, code vita is available javascript made easy is available but if you will go and find so many resources you will go to uh, this video one second video you will be completely stuck in tutorial hell you will just watch the videos and you will not not be able to proceed only stuck uh, only stick in one single resource it it will be easier for you okay so let's move towards the second topic of our session which is how you can increase your productivity by using artificial intelligence and some tools and uh, which are which i'll be telling you right now there is there is a uh, there are so many debates which are right now going on that ai is going to replace developers and it is going to replace jobs it is not completely true it is not at all completely true because you should be knowing how to use ai tools if you know that how you can increase your productivity how you can debug your code how you can uh, enhance your error handling error handling power using ai co- ai tools then you will be known as more pro- pro- productive okay company won't be able to fire you because you are making the uh, project easier for the company then they won't be able to fire you some of the uh, best tools which i personally use is synthesia synthesia is a uh, is a uh, ai video editor and video maker which i use for my community second is jasper.ai which is used to create content then third is simplified tome.ai tome.ai is used to create uh, popular presentations okay if you want to go for if you want to pitch any of your any startup idea or any of your college uh, college project then tome.ai is the best tool just by giving two to three prompts you will be able to create a whole p- presentation next is locofy hashnode ai if you are into technical blogging it is a go- it is got for you because i i uh, i have written two to three blogs on hashnode using hashnode ai only it enhances my productivity if i write two to three prompts for example i want to write a, a blog on react then i will just write uh, how to use 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 effect in react and it will in response it will reply me uh, within two to three paragraph of the whole blog and i can just read that blog make some changes and good to go ai has done some changes i am not have uh, it has increased my productivity next is notion ai notion everyone has uh, everyone should new, use notion it increases the productivity i am also personally using notion uh, to for my day to do day to day projects to main, uh, to see my daily task and to manage all my projects which i am currently working on and notion ai is helping me a lot it is helping me a lot to manage my day all my tasks it is all managed by notion ai next is luna and replit replit is a, a online compiler basically which is which is used to which is used to do directly code on internet you can code on javascript you can do run codes on c++ python anything on uh, replit now let me show you uh, some of the some of the cool uh, ai tools like i am using simplified right now you might be uh, you might be hearing so much from in, in news that community managers are uh, community man- managers are using simplified because the whole community need only one community manager only one cam- community manager can handle everything for everything uh, one community manager can handle your social media one community manager can handle your blogs all your instagram posts all your linkedin posts or your twitter everything can be handled just by only using one account out uh let me it is just loading okay so here is my simplify account and you can see that uh i can create i can create any of the uh, blog linkedin posts using simplified ai and if i want to if i go i just to, I, i just have to write only two uh, one prompt 
same line of mind that create a blog on this and that uh, this and that topic it will create create all the blog including the photos with just only one click like generate with ai schedule a post everything can be done using one simplified uh, tool you know don't need any community manager any social media manager for that you just have to schedule any post uh, for instagram or linkedin and you are good to go the whole calendar is available if you schedule uh, for any time any date or time what is your what will be your caption for that linkedin post or uh, or twitter post you can write here and you can also use these ai tools which is available uh, in simplified itself and it is very much easier like it okay it increases the productivity at max uh, so let me go to uh, one of my most famous tool which i use is hashnote ai which i was telling you if you are if you are a tech enthusiast you should you should definitely be on hashnote because hashnote has hashnote is having so many blogs so many good articles to read okay uh so if i go to my dashboard you can see the article master react tips and tricks this article which i published right now is completely uh, i i i wrote this article and it is completely refurbished by uh, artificial ai hashnode ai i wrote this article and it gave me all the errors all the grammatical mistakes all the syntax error automatically if i have made any and it has increased my productivity i don't have to read the, the whole blog uh, to in, uh, to for the grammar checks or if i have made any syntactical errors hashnode ai has done, done that automatically so uh, that's it for today if uh, you have any or and also you can connect me on linkedin i am available on linkedin and if you have any doubts regarding any of the roadmap you should follow uh, for how you should move forward in web development you can always ask me on linkedin you can always ping me i will be available so that's it from my side if you have any questions you can ask us wow what a wonderful knowledge given by you sir i hope our audience learned many new things from this session i would like to highlight some of the points from the session like javascript enhances website interactive responsiveness also increases website functionality and user experience it also saves server resources and reduces server load moreover we get to know about javascript users in different forms like web development blockchain development game development app development and automations etc it was very effective for our audience again thank you all for joining us and sharing your precious time and knowledge with us sir there are few questions which our audience wants to be answered so with your permission shall we yeah you can go forward okay sir so my first question will be what are some real world examples of successful application where javascript and ai tools have been combined to create innovation innovative solutions uh, one of the two one of the tools i have already shown you which is simplified simplified is completely uh, completely made using javascript and the ai ai which is used to uh, create blogs and which used to which is used to uh, establish your uh, connections it is used by javascript only it, has, it is a great combination of javascript and ai and secondly you might be knowing about chat gpt all the requests which is sent to the uh, chat gpt server is done through javascript okay sir my next question will be how do you see the future of javascript and ai evolving together so uh, javascript is never going to die okay like like php has died but javascript will, is never going to die because it is a heart of heart of the web javascript will be always be there and talking about ai ai is now right now is currently in a boom you are you will be able, you are uh, you are able to see the stats from uh, february to april that all the technologies which are uh, which are built uh, on uh, javascript and ai are so m- are very much funded there uh, there are some examples which i can give you is uh, one is i gave tome.ai tome.ai raised great funding from the uh, from from the mncs they raised so much funding because of their uh, innovative idea they used they used to create presentations automatic presentations using ai if you give one to two prompts that for example uh, i want to pitch for pitch for my startup my name of the startup is x is xyz what i will do is i will just type type a prompt like uh, this is my startup xyz this is the working of the startup and that will create a, a complete presentation so weekly there are so many tools which are evolving and uh, 
they are getting so many fundings so it is not going to die there are still, there is a so much future scope and so many uh, frameworks are also there which are right now in currently in build like for example there is a framework which i am currently contributing to which is toolget toolget which is uh, completely based on javascript and it manages all your dashboard yeah yeah so my last question will be how does the integration of ai tools with javascript enhance the capabilities of web applications okay. capabilities of web applications one thing which uh, which i want to tell is for example you can say you can take the example of google bard google bard is also a chat application now for example you are a you are a developer and there is a error and there is a bug which you are not able to find out in in a web app what you can do is you can just copy the link of that web app and you can paste it in google bard and you will just type you, you can just type the uh, basic short, basic source code and you can just say please find the error or find the bug in this it will show you the error so this is the complete integration google bard is completely completely a web app it is not not an uh, mobile application it is a web app it was very effective for Anything our audience else? sir thank you for answering this question again thank you all for attending today's webinar and if you have any additional question you can contact us by email or telephone we are happy to provide you additional support to you please follow on our social media and subscribe our youtube channel for new learnings so stay connected to us for new learnings i divajan your host for the day signing off have a wonderful day thank you everyone for joining us thank you sir uh, thanks a lot